Todd Wolf with Made by Wolf. And today I'm gonna to show you how to age cherry 30 years in five minutes. Stick around. So today I'm gonna to show you how I get this deep, rich color change in this cherry in just five minutes. And in order to do it, what we use is the old fashioned milk paint company's base no pigment paint. This is an option that they have so that you could add your own color into it, your own tint, and come up with your custom colors. But if you put no tint into that and you apply it onto cherry, then you get this rich color change. The color change happens because in milk paint there is lye, and lye reacts with the tannins that are in the wood and it creates this deep coloring in a very, very short period of time. When I mix up the milk paint, I usually mix it with two to three times the amount of water that they would call on the package directions to be mixed up if we were using it for paint. We do not need it that thick and we actually want it to stay wet. We don't want it to dry out at all until we get it all removed off of the wood. I have prepared and sanded a piece of cherry here that we're gonna do that on. You'll notice here also that I have numerous pieces of wood here. So this is cherry, this is white oak, this is the second wood I would encourage using the milk paint for. There's a dramatic change that happens between the regular oak and the oak that has had the milk paint put on it. And this is with some finish. You can see this is a very, very rich color here. This is red oak next to it. With the red oak, it's more of a graying that happens. Not really impressed. Uh, if you like that look, you could get it. Next to it is maple. Maple I really don't like. Um, it's almost a, a yellowy, kind of muddy kind of color. Not a fan of that necessarily. Next to that is ash. You really can't tell, but there has been milk paint applied to this end of the board. There's almost no change at all in ash. And then finally down here is walnut. And the walnut, there is a, a change here, but it is, honestly, it, uh, it turns it browner. It removes some of the rich red undertones that are in the wood uh, naturally and so not necessarily a fan of that although it does have a change there but for white oak and especially for cherry it makes a dramatic difference the proportions that the actual directions have for mixing the milk paint is one to one volume wise in warm water uh, they suggest that you put the water in the cup first and then mix it together so we're going to be going three to one I do not need very much of it for what I'm doing, so I'm just gonna go three tablespoons. So we need to make sure that this is completely dry because any moisture that gets into the milk paint will ruin the milk paint and won't be able to use it in the future. All right, and then we got one. One tablespoon there. And then we're just gonna mix this up. They recommend mixing for a couple minutes. You can see already that there is a difference between the two. And you just want to flood that and let the lye do its work. So we will just let that sit and we'll wait for five minutes. Although honestly, five minutes is probably more than ample for the, uh, the fullness of this to take place. All right, so we're almost at five minutes here. Now, one of the things that I've done off camera is that I just have gone over this once or twice. Just make sure that the surface has stayed flooded and stayed wet the entire time. But let's see what this looks like if we were to wipe this off here five minutes into this. So. So you can see that's a, a pretty stark transformation for just that five minutes. What I wanna do now is to show you the coloring process on a recent project that I did. It was a bench that I made. The ends of the bench were made out of cherry. 
and I used this process to darken the ends of those bench. And so we'll show you that process real quickly sped up and then we'll also show you the final product so you can see what a difference that it makes. Again, the coloring was put on by taking the old fashioned Milk Paint Company's base no pigment paint and mixing it. I mix it a little bit thin, probably three times the amount of water that they recommend for the actual milk paint process. And then it's put on with a brush. It takes a little bit of work to get this onto all sides and it needs to be fairly wet. I left it for about 10 minutes after I finished the first coat on all of it. And in that time I went back around and I hit everything again to make sure things were wet. But the process of coloring actually happens really quick. So there are a few precautions that you need to take when working with milk paint, and that is to protect your skin and to protect your eyes. That is because the chemical process that is actually darkening the wood involves the lye that is a part of milk paint, and lye is a fairly caustic chemical, and so care needs to be taken when you are working with it. After that was left to sit for about 10 minutes, I was able to go back over it with a sponge and water this process took a while. Uh, I had to go over it, I think, four times. I probably switched out the water somewhere close to six times just to make sure that we was cleaning it with clean water over and over again, wringing out the sponge continuously, wiping a little bit, wringing it out. I was also able to go at it with a toothbrush and uh, that was able to get into some of the cracks and crevices that were created when the chip carving happened. Um, there was a little bit of tear out and uh, the milk paint kind of was hanging out down in those and I was able to get that out with the toothbrush, but uh, I was able to get that out fairly well. After everything was cleaned up, I was able to let that sit for a couple days before we put the top coat on it. So I wanted to put a little before and after of what exactly the milk paint does to the wood when you use the milk paint that is the base paint with no dye. With cherry anyways, it is an amazing transformation that happens. And again, this transformation happened in the first five to 10 minutes that the milk paint was on the wood. Most of the rest of the time was spent cleaning up. That probably took 45 minutes. The actual transformation happens fairly quickly. So I've let this dry so you can see what the color is. After it is dried out, you can see that it's pretty much the same color I got on this piece of cherry. And uh, it is a deep and a rich color. And you really, I have not found anything in terms of dyes that match this when it comes to cherry. So I encourage you to put your thinking cap on, see how you can use this on a cherry project or on a project with white oak, because that's the other wood that it really stands out on. If you happen to find that this works well with a wood that I don't have here, that I haven't tested, please send me a note and let me know, particularly if you're from another part of the world where there are wood options that we don't have here in North America. Hope this sparks some ideas in your head. Again, this is Todd Wolf with Made by Wolf, encouraging you to get out in your space and to make something today.